Thank you for joining me on the E3 platform in our new activity timeline feature and enhanced mobile triage. I'm Amber Schroeder and I'll be your webinar presenter today. So first, let me explain what the E3 platform is. E3 stands for Electronic Evidence Examiner. It's a 64-bit platform that does data analysis for computers, email, internet data, smartphones, and IoT devices. My goal of this webinar is to make sure that you get a perspective. Many times in digital forensics, we don't think about how our data can aid in another type of investigation. And so I wanna show you how data from a smartphone can aid in other types of investigations. A quick reminder on why we want to look at triage data and look at quick acquirable information is when we look at all of digital forensics, at the, only, at the end of the day, only 20% of the data that we go through actually brings us our results. So we really want to find a way that we can quickly capture that to lead us to the next step in our investigation. Mobile triage is one of those ways to do it. When we look at mobile triage associated with the E3 platform, this triage functionality is available with both Android and iOS, and it gives you the basic device information. It tells you all the installed applications associated with the device. That's very important since the majority of users and suspects out there spend 80% of their time in an installed application. It also provides you the contact email accounts associated with the device so you know what type of external communication might be happening. It gives you the ICE information for any type of emergency situation with a child. And then of course, location information. We try to pull it from a variety of sources, but having a collection of your geolocation information can really save you time in your investigation. When we go to the next function, which is our activity timeline feature, which is a unique feature only available in the E3 platform, this is an acquisition that you can do separately. It only takes a few seconds to minutes to be able to complete, and it allows you to track all the activity associated with the device down to the second. I like to refer to this feature as a moment of time. You can gather this information with either a complete logical acquisition, as we see here, and you can see it in the tree view to our left, and then we see the details in the main viewer window here. Or you can also acquire that information separately with your custom acquisition option. When we look at the details associated with our acquisition, there's some key information that we want to look for. First, we see some regular items that we see occurring in the running of a Samsung device in this case. We know when the user was on the phone, and we also now see things like the cloud cam. So this came up while the user was in this time period. We come over here and we see characteristics such as move to background, move to foreground. That information tells us whether or not our user was interacting with that device at that particular time. Here are some of the details that are captured in the activity timeline. Of course, the time, the date and time of the action down to the second. The application name, so the name of the application that was actually running on the device. The internal application name, the internal activity name, and the type as well as move to background where the user did not interact with the application, but the application itself moved to the background and move to foreground where the user did interact with the application for a particular time. We also see configuration changes and we have the category of none when they were not available associated with that particular activity. So why is this valuable to you to have a different perspective on your mobile forensics? The first area that this really gives a big impact in is associated with vehicle forensics. Vehicle forensics can be a very difficult area for you to find information as there are so many different vehicles out there that many of them are not simply supported by different vehicle forensic tools. This allows you to take the mobile that was in the vehicle to be able to gather information that might be associated with an incident that occurred with a vehicle or a crash. So, First question everyone asks is, does this information disappear if the device is turned off as it gets to my lab? It does not disappear if the device is restarted. The period of time will vary from device to device based on how much use that device has had. So if it is a heavily used device, you're going to get less information in the activity timeline than you will if it is a lightly used device. You can get up to months and weeks of information. So what other options do we have for vehicle forensics? We always can go to the forensics of things and find that information that might be also helping in that vehicle investigation. 
One of the perfect examples of this is with the fitness devices. They're typically worn by the suspect, in this case in a vehicle, and it can contain a lot of value information that can tell you what happened in the incidents of a crash or something else. We have health details, so we can look at things like the heart rate of our suspect. We see whether or not the device was synchronized at a particular time. We also see things like the apps, the SMS, phone calls, and then geolocation, so we know exactly where this event might have occurred. The basics of the information, such as the messages, that's an obvious one. Were they receiving a message at the time of the crash? The second might not be so obvious on how it applies to vehicle forensics. In this case, we can look for the walking routes and we see the coordinate information here. We see where it was occurring and we also see, see things like the speed. How fast were they walking? When we look at a device that was associated with an incident in a vehicle, we see a change in this. So we still get the geolocation information, but when we look at the speed, we either have one of the world's fastest runners or they were traveling in a vehicle and it will tell us the speed that vehicle was going at the time of the incident. All of these different pieces come together to help us in our investigation, whether it's through a car crash and finding the information of what happened at that particular crash or a murder investigation of what were all of the items that were being run at the time that the individual was murdered, or even in the corporate world where we might have a security breach that we know occurred at a particular time, a quick audit of key devices can tell you whether or not that malware or that intrusion might have occurred through the mobile network as opposed to the primary network. Each one of these is just taking a different perspective on what you might have taken for granted in mobile forensics. If you're interested in more information on this topic, you can read it in our blog at forensic-impact.com or it's also available on paraben.com. We have available a 15-day trial that includes any sample evidence that you might be interested in processing to give you some perspective on the data that you can capture and free video training available at our YouTube station at Paraben Forensics. If you would like to do a trial, you can email us at trial at paraben.com. Thank you for joining me for our webinar.